an Otarian human barbarian would lead a tumultuous life, leading her to be referred to as thrice touched by infinity. A misunderstanding between her people over a powerful artifact would cause her to become mortally wounded and eventually transformed into an avatar of death. Her eventual sacrifice would allow the Great Mending to begin, healing Dominaria and saving the entire multiverse. This is the exploration of Jessica. Jessica lived with her family as a part of Balthor Rockfist's tribe. She was slightly shunned for embracing dwarven opinions as she mostly spent learning from dwarves rather than the humans of her tribe. Jessica would live peacefully until her brother, Kamal, would seek his fortunes as a pit fighter in the Cabal City's gladiator pits. When Kamal was shown the fighter prizes, he became obsessed with obtaining Mirari, a legendary artifact. After multiple pursuers attempted claiming the Mirari as their own, the artifact would eventually end up in the possession of Kamal's good friend, Chainer. The curse of the Mirari would cause Chainer to fall into madness. As the power of the Mirari overcame Chainer, he was twisted and deformed into a horde of dementia beasts. As Chainer died, he gave the Mirari to Kamal who attached the artifact to his sword, keeping it, at least for a short time, in safe hands. Concerned for Kamal's well-being, Jessica and Balthor followed Kamal's footsteps. Jessica and Balthor eventually reunited with Kamal in a village. Kamal, now influenced by the Mirari, was attempting to take control of several tribes under his dictatorship. Jessica and Balthor tried to reason with Kamal, but he would not be stopped without a war. Kamal would strike a vicious blow to his sister Jessica, the wound was seen as incurable and slowly eating away at Jessica. The shock would shatter the Marari spell over Kamal. Kamal, now in deep grief, vowed to dispose of the Marari and heal Jessica, traveling to the Croson Forest to do so. Shaky alliances were created by several tribes, which all blamed Kamal for the damage to their bases. They pursued Kamal, but Balthor would sacrifice himself so that Kamal could escape with Jessica. Kamal reaches the home of another old friend, Setan, who attempt to heal Jessica. Setan advises Kamal to talk to an enlightened Nantuko named Thriss to help control his strength and commune with nature. Laquadus eventually caught up with Kamal, taking control of a zombified Balthor. Kamal was forced to strike down his mentor to end his suffering, and now enraged, continued to fight Laquadus. During the confrontation, Braids and a small group kill Setan, burn down his hut, and kidnap Jessica, delivering her to the Cabal Patriarch. Jessica was brought before the first of the Cabal. Known for his killing touch, he embraced Jessica, intending to kill, yet the Cabal god Kuber intervened, and the hatred that poured into Jessica by the first strengthened her and combined with her planeswalker spark, causing her to transform into Phage. Phage now becomes the Cabal's favorite weapon, empowered with the ability to kill merely by touching another being. A powerful couple, Nivia and Ixidor, battled in the Cabal fighter pit to earn enough money to escape the squalor of the Cabal, but their next opponent was none other than Phage. Phage easily subdues her opponents, killing Nivia in the process. Having lost, and discovering some of the money was forged by Ixidor, Cabal officers confiscate his goods and leave him naked in the desert. Ixidor swears revenge against Phage. Kamal reaches the city, and Braids offers him a chance to meet Phage in a fight. Phage does not recognize her brother, and greatly resents the name Jessica. Rejected, Kamal ends the fight, and returns to Krosa to build an army capable of defeating the Cabal and saving his sister. Meanwhile in the desert, Ixidor uses his powerful illusionist magic to create a kingdom named Topos. One night, Ixidor dreams that the Cabal rips off his arm, and Phage continues to hunt him, but an angel with the face of Nivea, named Akroma, defends him. When he wakes, he finds the angel is real, and his arm is missing, accidentally created by his magic and flesh during his sleep. Ixidor sends Akroma to eliminate Phage. Kamal returns to the city with his army, and agrees once again to battle Phage. Phage still resents Kamal and wishes to kill him, but their fight is cut short by the arrival of Akroma. Kamal, his army, and Phage battle Akroma. Kamal manages to cut the legs of Akroma, who then flees after Phage's touch maims her legs. Akroma returns to Ixidor. The Cabal and Crozen armies come to a truce, both fearing Ixidor has become too powerful. Together they forge a weapon, Soul Reaper, capable of killing Akroma. 
Phage, Kamal, and the army march towards Ixidor and Topos. Ixidor creates an army to fight back and actually begins to gain an advantage. However, Phage expels beetles from her body that turn into death worms, each worm representing a murder she had committed. Once the worms have become expelled, Phage turns into Jessica once again, dying from Kamal's previous wound. Akroma is unable to battle the powerful worms, who go on to devastate both the armies and the land. One worm, the embodiment of the murdered Nivea, catches the scent of Ixidor and consumes him. The loving couple is once again reunited in eternity. Jessica realizes she must once again absorb the worms to stop the untold havoc. With the cooperation of Akroma, Jessica absorbs the worms and once again becomes Phage, despising her brother once more. The armies agree to a truce to recover, and Akroma becomes the Queen of Topos. Phage returns to the Grand Colosseum controlled by the Cabal, and Kamal returns to Krosa creating a new plan to save his sister. This concludes the Onslaught story, but the battle between Akroma and Phage would continue in legions. Akroma would find Braids wounded in a forest and brainwashed her into becoming a follower of Akroma. Akroma learns several Cabal secrets from Braids. Phage receives orders from the Cabal to sway the people of Sanctum, led by Zagorka, to take the side of the Cabal. While Phage is in the refuge of Sanctum, Akroma arrives and openly declares war on the Cabal. Akroma reveals Phage's true purpose as told by Braids, to be the mother of the reincarnation of the Cabal god Kuber. Akroma leaves her Topos and Phage for the Grand Colosseum. After the first and Phage have intercourse, he realizes she is the only one with the power to resist him. He plots to murder Phage, unaware she is already pregnant with his child. The Cabal sends Phage back out to destroy Akroma with three assassins, the assassins secretly knowing they could not return until they had killed Phage for the first. During their travels, they find Braids, and Phage orders the men to return Braids to the Cabal. Phage finds Akroma emerging from the Death Worm containing Ixidor. He wished to stay in the intestines with Nivea, but he heals Akroma before she leaves. Akroma and Phage battle along with Stonebrow, who attempts to kill them both. Phage, weakened by wounds and pregnancy, retreats. She barely reaches the city of Afedo and gives birth to Kuber. The Patriarch attempts to assassinate Phage multiple times, but the influence of the newly born god protects her. After separating Phage from the baby, the Patriarch attempts to kill Phage one last time, but Braids sends a Dementia monster to devour him. Phage and Braids now take control of the Cabal. The Kuber states Phage must battle Akroma with a gigantic army, as every death will age him by a day. The battlefield will be Sanctum, where Zagorka is currently imprisoned. Stonebrow convinces Kamal to intervene in the fight. Both men show up to Sanctum, with Kamal wielding the Soul Reaper to kill Akroma. Zagorka, imprisoned in a tower above the fight, jumps in an attempt to end her life, but crash lands on both Akroma and Phage. As she does, Kamal had already begun swinging the Soul Reaper, killing both Akroma and Phage, but also unexpectedly killing Zagorka. The three women's bodies and souls fly upwards in a vortex, combining and exploding. From the explosion, a brilliant light emerges, washing over a radiant being born unlike any other, Corona, the false god. The three souls had combined into a new godlike being, but this would not be the last time we see Jessica. The story of Corona and Jessica continues in part two.